Congratulations, young one. Uh, what? You are now a legendary. I'm a one. You heard me. Ladies, gentlemen, and pals of all ages, for a game with the inspirations that it has, I'm surprised to see that a lot of people weren't expecting to find a certain thing in PAL world. A certain type of PAL, more specifically. One that is exceedingly rare and exceedingly strong, and sort of par for the field for a creature catching game, which is the concept of legendary PALs. This isn't just some random word that we've chosen either, and we haven't just randomly decided that it applies to some standard ones, but this is actually a specifically denoted thing in the game when you have one, as they will always have the passive skill. Skill, Legend, giving them a bonus 20% to both attack and defense, as well as 15% movement speed as a bonus. And the beautiful part of this skill is that you can actually pass it down through breeding so that at the end of the day, you could even have a technically legendary chickpea if you want, though it would only be in spirit, really. Still, though, it counts. All that said, aside from, of course, these legendary pals all being quite rare, with only one of each existing on the map at any given time, but they are also exceptionally strong. Not only being guaranteed to be level 50, because that's how they spawn, but they also tend to be the best of the best when it comes to moveset and stats in general. So all that said, let's dive into what the four legendary pals are, where to find them, and how to capture them. First up, and one of the sort of poster children of the game, we have Jetragon. This beautiful monstrosity is designed with two purposes in mind. First, blowing shit up, and let me tell you, he does that exceedingly well. Even having the pal skill Divine Dragon to boost dragon damage by 20%, but second is move speed. He is a flying mount once you craft his pal gear, and he is by far the fastest flying mount in the game, and it's not even slightly close. As a result of that, honestly, if you're going to only ever catch one of these, it should probably be Jet Dragon, because it just makes the entire future of your gameplay much more convenient. So with that out of the way, as I already mentioned, all of these are level 50. So while they are all technically open world bosses that you could fight as low as level one or two, if you were somehow actually able to get to where they are at that level, I would definitely advise waiting until you are in the high 40s before you actually give it a go, because even then, it can be tough, as these are four are essentially just the most dangerous creatures in the whole game. That said, there are some strategies that you can employ to make it a bit simpler, as you'll see me doing here. So I'm going to explain the general process and strategy on Jet Dragon specifically. This is the same concept that you can apply to each and every one. Before you even go in then, make sure that you have a big supply of ammo for whatever weapons you're going to be using, and I definitely recommend guns over melee for this. The shotgun is fantastic for this, if you have it. Otherwise, the single shot rifle is probably the best at getting in consistent damage from a safe position if you have decent enough aim. Aside from that, you also just want a metric fuck ton of legendary pal spheres. They have the name that they do for a reason, and that reason is if you try to catch a legendary pal without one of these, your chances are essentially zero. On top of that, you also want to make sure that you have applied all of your Leaf Monk effigy bonuses at a statue of power to boost your general capture rate. Aside of that, honestly, your best move is to just give it a go and do your best. The actual location for Jet Dragon, then, is the big volcano on the western side of the map, right at this handy marker here. As an Alpha world boss, he does respawn, meaning if you do accidentally kill him, or if you succeed at capturing him and just want another, he'll respawn around once every four days of in-game time, unless your world settings are different. Once you get here, he won't be right on the marker because he just loves speeding around the place, so you sort of have to chase him down and aggro him. Once you do, just prepare for a nice long fight. My best advice for the fight part itself is to bring ice element pals if you have any strong ones as he's weak to ice. But for the most part, your goal is to hold aggro yourself by shooting him repeatedly and then playing around the terrain and objects in the area to block his attacks, as 90% of his attacks are projectile based, so you can just sort of get fancy with the skeletons and such to avoid the majority of incoming damage, while your active pal helps out with the actual killing. Once he gets below 2000 health or so, he will be physically capturable, but the chances do of course go up and up until he's around 600 HP or so. Again, legendary pal spheres are pretty much required for capturing this, and while normally you would expect to aim for back throws, as back throws do increase capture rate for most pals, that doesn't seem to be the case with these legendaries. You can see the number is not going up when you aim at the back of them, so don't stress out too much about that, just get them low and start praying to the legendary pal gods that 12 to 14% is enough with the spheres that you have in your pocket. Though I've heard apparently if you fail to capture them too many times in a row on a low health legendary, they can just sort of say, peace, I'm out, and, and just die instantly. So if that happens, again, they do respawn, so it's not really the end of the world. That said, that's all the info you need for Jet Dragon. Best of luck on the actual catch then. For our second legendary of the day then, we have 
have Frostallion. This is essentially an ice pegasus, for lack of a better descriptive term, really, but I think that one does a pretty good job. Again, like Jet Dragon, once you actually have this one, its stats are insane. An incredible array of powerful ice attacks, the legend passive skill, of course, but then there's also the Ice Emperor skill for 20% bonus ice damage, too. It has insane health, and of course, level 4 cooling as a base worker, so if you ever need something really cold, this gal has got you covered. As far as its location and capturing it then, this one is way up in the very northwest side of the map on the Frozen Mountain, and even on the northwestern side of this biome island area is where you'll find a big patch of open ice, and within that patch is your pal. Like Jet Dragon, your best bet is to play around the terrain and keep aggro on yourself so your pals can freely attack, and given that Frostallion is clearly an ice pal, the ideal matchup here is fire damage if you want to take it down quickly. Though if you are going in the order that we are showing them off here today, then even just bringing Jet Dragon is more than enough to do the trick for this one. The legendary pals are exceedingly strong even as a baseline, so bringing one of them does the job pretty well. That said, same strategy, get it to low health, throw balls might take a few of them, but you'll get there in the end, and you can of course just play around the terrain again here. There's a lot of little ice spires that you can hide behind and stuff like that. Frostallion then also has a saddle as pal gear, allowing you to use her as a flying mount if you wish to, but it's also worth noting that she's much slower at flying than Jet Dragon. This one is much more for just the utility of personal player controlled attacks while riding. Moving on then to our last two legendary pals, these two are very much attached to each other. Essentially just a pair of centaurs with one representing the daytime, one representing the nighttime, and your first guess based on that is that one probably spawns only during day and one only during night, right? Well, that's not quite correct. They actually both spawn together all the time as part of the same fight. Two legendaries that you have to fight together at once. And that is why I absolutely recommend taking these on only when you have at least Jet Dragon. Frostallion also helps for sure if you have them, but Jet Dragon is a bit of a special sauce sort of secret here. As for the pals themselves, the first one is Palladius, the embodiment of the Palladium Fragments, basically a paladin centaur meant to represent everything good in the world, the legend skill of course on it, and then Celestial Emperor, which is a 20% boost to neutral attacks, as this is a neutral type pal. The other one then is Necromus, the dark type, the reverse ideals, embodiment of darkness and such, which is why it is a dark type. The legend skill, of course, is what this has too, and then Lord of the Underworld for a 20% boost to dark attacks. Both of these are level two lumber and mining, so not crazy as base workers, but that is definitely not really their intended purpose given their insane stats and incredible movesets. To catch these then, you need to reach the northern tip of the desert located on the top right of the map. Another fun little lore overlap with these guys representing day and night and such is, of course, the desert is hot during the day and cold at night. So you want to make sure that you bring both armor types with you as this will probably be a pretty long fight and thus might transfer from day to night through the cycle as you go. Once you reach this spot, then just have a look around for two massive centaurs grazing around the area as a pair. Then comes the fun part. We are in a desert, so there's barely any terrain that you can actually use to defend yourself and block projectiles. And because there are two of them, there's not really a way to aggro control at all. And so the real solution basically is to have your pal 1v1 one, one, one of them and the other one will be attacking you. This means you need to be on your toes with dodging and movement to avoid the attacks as much as possible and also trying to pump out as much damage as you can. But realistically, the ideal way to do this is to focus the same one that your pal is as the fight will get insanely easier when you only have to deal with one of these at a time. That said, the trick that I use to get through this a little bit easier is if you ever get to super low health, just get on your flying mountain, sort of fly in circles, avoiding attacks as much as you can. This works best with Jet Dragon, of course, as he's the fastest flying mount, but essentially this is just a way to give you a sort of safe period to regenerate health and shield without resetting the boss by moving too far away. Other than that, it's a relatively standard affair. Necromus is of course a dark type, which means weak to dragon attacks, and Palladius is a neutral type, meaning weak to dark attacks. So those are the two types that you generally want to make it easier, and then of course it's just a matter of getting them to low health and then chucking enough spheres their way until luck comes out on top. And that pretty much does it then, everyone. That's what the legendary pals are, as well as where and how to actually catch them. Yes, this is pretty heavily late game, but that's what a legend is at the end of the day, right? Would be sort of anticlimactic otherwise. It's also worth mentioning that through killing each of these bosses, they do also have a chance of dropping legendary blueprints, which let you craft gear that you simply cannot get through other means. So that's another big reason it's important to be aware of these guys, but we'll go over that in more detail tomorrow in a separate video. For now though, hopefully you've enjoyed at least seeing these four legendaries for yourself, even if you aren't quite ready to take them on yet in your own game. And I wish you the best of luck when it comes time to do so. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. 
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.